Okay, so while our bacon's finishing up cooking here, let's go ahead and get our dough ready that we're going to use. Now, I'm not going to use cornbread for this. I'm going to use wheat flour. So, let me put some wheat flour in this pan. And like I said again, guys, some of this is trial and error, you know. I'm going to put just a shake of baking soda in there. Mix it up. I'm not going to put very much salt in here at all because I'm going to use that bacon grease in here. And that bacon grease is going to be salty and add the bacon flavor. That's the whole point of the bacon. Now I'm going to add water to this. Make myself a dough here. We'll go ahead and knead this dough around in our hand real good. Sop up all this water and get it in the dough. That's looking good now. Starting to get the right consistency of what I'm looking for. Breaking it up and kneading it around a little bit. And you could do this in a plastic bag if you wanted to. I just decided to get my hands dirty and have a little fun today. I'm getting ready to add some grease to this real quick like. Now let's get some grease mixed in here real good. Let that kind of solidify in there for a second. We're not putting our hands in hot grease. Get some dry flour out here. Sprinkle in his pan a little bit. Okay. Now, get this grease worked into this real, real good. You need that around. Get that grease worked in there. You can see what we got there is we got a big good pile of dough right there. Now we could cook that just like that um, and if you didn't have any other tools or anything or you couldn't improvise anything else that'd be fine. You could make it smaller ball, smaller balls and just pat it out with your hand just like you were making a burger patty. I'm just squashing it down about as thick as I want it to be. And then what I'm actually going to do with mine is I'm going to take this Pathfinder pack stove and I'm just going to cut these things out to an exact size. Just like that. Pull them out of there and set them to the side. Get this. That's about as thick as the other one is. Just like a cookie cutter, isn't it? pretty good. About the same thickness. Cut it out. Now that's four we got out of that so far. I was hoping to get six. Looks like I'm going to get about five. Which is fine. That's all good. But this left, whatever I have left over of this, I'm just going to fry up in a pan like a fritter. It's not going to be corn, it's going to be wheat. But I'm going to fry it up in the bacon grease in my pan here and eat it with my breakfast. This one right here, I'm just going to get it smashed out into a fritter because I'm going to have that with my breakfast, like I said. Make it a little thinner than those other ones were. There we go. Get 
that wired up just a shade here. We'll get that right in our grease of our pan here. Get that cooking. Now we just did not hardly have any flour left over at all in that. I mean we had this much. Now we're not going to waste that. What am I going to use that for? Dry shampoo. That's what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to put it right in my hair. Because I don't want to waste it. It's flour. That makes a great dry shampoo. It's got some, it's got some uh, baking soda in it. Of course it had a little bit of that grease in it, but that's not going to hurt anything. There's not enough of it in this dry material to shake a stick at. Get it rubbed into my beard real good as well. Good to go till the next time we can bathe. Bacon's good and done. So we'll get it set to the side here and we'll get our fritter into grease. Get it cooking up real good. We can actually take two of these utensils and make a set of tongs pretty easy to just kind of set that bacon on the corner of the stove over there out of the way for a minute. Not going to hurt anything to get some more bacon grease on the stove, that's for sure. This fritter cooked up. Get a Aracana egg in there. We're gonna have a king size breakfast this morning. And we'll cook up some bread for later. Okay guys, once our eggs are pretty much done, we're gonna set them off to the side for a minute. We're gonna pull our makeshift oven on top of our stove here. Scoot these a little bit closer together. Just like that. lid on it and we'll get those cooked up okay guys we got some hot chocolate water ready to go here and uh, back to the hot chocolate again today this is what it is looks like a mighty fine breakfast right here you know, people have been giving me the devil for using this metal on this non-stick skillet of this uh, titanium spork but I don't go down hard enough on it to scratch it and I'm definitely not cutting into it um, with a knife or anything so you know I've had this skillet for a long time and it's still as non-stick as it ever was you just have to be careful what you're doing that's all Okay, we've got some Chalua on our eggs here. They look really good. So let's cut into those bad boys. Oh man. Bacon got a little more done than I wanted to, but it's all right. Now I didn't boil this bacon down any or let it soak in water or anything to absorb some of the salt. I like salt. Yeah. You know, certain amounts of salt are good for your body. Um, salt's kind of a weird thing, you know. Just enough will help you retain moisture in your body. Too much will dehydrate you a little bit. So, salt's one of those things you kind of have to be, you know, guesstimation with, kind of like I do. And just uh, eat what you want and hope you're not eating too much, I guess. But, people lived on this kind of stuff for hundreds of years. And for some reason today, we think it's all bad for you. But, I'll tell you what, those eggs are good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce, I guess, another sundry today. And we're going to talk about this sundry in the follow-up video from this video. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about honey. 
Honey's another one of those wonder sundries that you can carry with you, and it will do a ton for you. I haven't even opened this yet. It's brand new. Uh, of course, I've got the little bear here to remind me of my childhood, I guess. But honey will store almost indefinitely. And we'll talk more about that when we get to that video. Right now, I just wanted to get a little bit of honey, about a teaspoon's worth, on my bread here. Just to give me a little sweet flavor with the salt and the hot. And it'll be good. That's high living right there, fellas. High living. Well, that sure goes down good. Mm -mm -mm. The only problem with eating is means dishes. But I try to keep that down to a minimum. Generally, I eat out of what I cook in. But since I made some bread today, I had a couple of the pans I'm going to have to wash. I had a couple guys ask me want to answer that question real quick um, while I'm here. I had a couple guys asking me about these nesting cups and bottles that I carry. And the larger bottle that I carry in my backpack is a 32-ounce guide design. Very hard to get right now. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I don't want to speculate, but they may not be available again for all I know. Um, both of my nesting cups are titanium. Um, I prefer titanium over stainless steel because it heats up faster, holds heat longer, but it's ten times as expensive, you know. Um, the smaller nesting cup that I use most of the time that I keep my smaller clean canteen bottle in, and it's a 16-ounce bottle, I believe. might be 14, but it's close. Um, that's basically my scouting bottle. I keep that in my haversack or my knapsack when I scout, um, along with this nesting cup. If I'm not planning to stay out overnight, obviously I could if I had to. I've always got the five C's with me um, in one shape, form, or another. And I could stay out overnight with that if I had to, but if I'm not planning an overnight or a two-day or a three-day, then I'll take the smaller water bottle and the smaller nesting cup. If I'm taking my large backpack and I'm going to stay out there you know, for a day or two or three or whatever the case may be, then I'm going to take the larger one. And I usually still have the smaller one in my haversack um, because I'll drop the knapsack at that point and go to a backpack. But at that point, I generally will have this one as well um, in my haversack. You know, it's really redundant to have that many containers, but it just makes it real quick and easy to get to on the trail to grab that water bottle out and drink out of it. The clean canteen bottles are, are much less expensive than the guide design. But, and they're just as bulletproof. I mean, I've had that one for probably three years. It's got a lot of dents in it, but it's never leaked. So the clean canteen bottles are good too. Um, I just prefer the thick walled stainless steel of the guide for you know, having a bottle, one bottle that I know is going to be bulletproof no matter what. And that's what I find important with equipment is you just find what's bulletproof, what will last forever, and that's what you buy. Oh, you can really see the heat rolling out of the top of that pipe up to the top of the uh, yurt here. That thing puts off a ton of heat. The stove is amazing when it comes to that. All right, let's get down here and kind of see what we got going on on the stove here. Oh man, look at that. Now I have flipped these one time, guys, and I didn't do it on the camera, but I have flipped them one time, and they are beauty. No doubt. Look at that. Like a wheat bread. Wow. You can still smell it a little bit. It almost smells like there might be some dough still left. I don't know how to explain that. It could be the dough cooking off the top and the bottom of this pan, but I'm going to let them cook a little bit longer just to be sure, but they're looking really good. Okay, guys, we got our bread type 
pastry, our wheat bread type pastry sitting right here, drying off in the cooling rack.